Imagine waking up in the morning to see that all of the issues in your life have disappeared. These could range from just a messy desk to even war. Could such a society be possible? But the final result could still be attainable. And that too, and can be possible to reach. To me, the most, the most important issues that we face as a modern society is public health, welfare of us as a species. In order for us, over the past few decades, diseases and disorders such as cancer, hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease have been on the rise. In fact, as of 2016, more than 2 million teens in the United States combat hypertension. This disorder is very common among teens, and I was very surprised by this. But before I touch on hypertension again, I'd like to talk about how these issues work in each of our lives. So, initially when you think of hypertension, you believe it to be an, an issue most common in adults, even in teens. Most of the people I know who have hypertension are in their mid to upper 40s and 50s. Now, this is actually a common myth. Anyone is susceptible to hypertension. The risk is possible for all of us, regardless of our ethnicity, our gender, and our race. And more importantly, our age. Now, let me talk about this. This doesn't mean that all of us, as teens, are getting stressful because of, of uh, you know, homework and tests from school. I agree with this, but stress doesn't cause hypertension. This too is just a common myth. Quite often we see that hypertension is not caused by stress, but rather by lifestyle choices. The things we eat, the things that we drink, they're the things that cause hypertension. In addition to this, it's true that uh, hypertension can also be triggered by other means as well. So this was my objective. I had to make sure that the public has a greater understanding of hypertension. More importantly, specifically teens. So I decided to work with a friend of mine to ensure that this issue is escalated and more people have public awareness. We evaluated our options. We were thinking of making a PSA a YouTube video, but ultimately, we decided that we would be educators and assume this role in order to teach teens about hypertension. So, before we could begin, we had to think about if we ourselves know everything about hypertension. Truth is, there are five main concepts that we need to understand. What is it? What are its symptoms? What makes it? What treats, treatments are available? and how can we prevent it? Once we were able to understand all of these five main key concepts, we were able to plan out our lesson. Okay, so our teaching style incorporated three main methodologies. Directing, which, in, which was made to be like a common classroom lecture. So this was similar to like learning through listening. Directing, was through critical thinking skills by discussing among teams and peers, and delegating, which allowed for small group projects where teams would work together in order to develop their teamwork and leadership skills. In addition to this, we also wanted to incorporate John Dewey's, uh, John Dewey's principles in order to ensure that our lesson is intuitive, interactive, and hands-on. So let me run through our lesson that we presented today. We began with an NBC video that explains hypertension and also provided a first-hand team, a first-hand experience of a team facing the condition in the Midwest. Through this, we were able to provide enough context for the teens to understand the next part of our lesson, which was a mini-lecture. In this, we explained five concepts of hypertension. The fact that it has no clear symptoms. There's no way for one to know that they have hypertension without going to the doctor. The fact that it could progress to cause heart disease. With this, we were then able to incorporate the ideals of John Dewey, and we allowed for a scenario where students would come to the front of the classroom and use a sphygmomanometer, a tool that we use to measure our blood pressure. So with this, 
they were able to get real life experience about how to measure their blood, blood pressure. Also, we wanted to incorporate more ideas of John Dewey and the ability for us to create real life applications so that the knowledge learned can be applied in a meaningful way. We split up our students into four main groups and handed each one a piece of paper. This one contained a fictional scenario of a fictional patient with their own story and their own data. Using this, the students were able to assume the roles of physicians and diagnose each treatment and condition and type of hypertension for each scenario. With this complete, they were able to then present their information towards the class. Qualitatively speaking, we were able to see huge success as these students were able to show good understanding. But this wasn't enough. We needed to know for sure, and to do so we needed quantitative measurements. We began through assessments. Before our lesson, we handed a pre-assessment, for which the students only reached a meager score of 41%. But by the end, through the course of the lesson, they were able to get a final assessment score of over 92% on average, showing clear improvement. At first, we were elated. We were really happy that in our small scale lesson, we were able to get huge success. But then we had to start thinking, had we really made a difference? Had our one small lesson in one city made by a couple of high school teens really contributed to this issue? Simply put, the answer is no, it truly doesn't. I was discouraged at first, but I didn't give up. The man who moves a mountain begins by carrying small stones. This quote was coined by the great Chinese philosopher Confucius. And it was, this is my last bastion of hope. I'm trying to move a mountain. This mountain is creating awareness for hypertension among teens. And the first lesson that I presented was the first stone I carried. I began to think, how can I increase outreach? How can I ensure more stones are carried? I then planned that in the near future, we would present our lesson to various locations within our community, and then allow for representatives to use our lesson plans and curriculum to present in other locations in their own communities. This would start a movement with time and investment of effort. We would be able to see a true difference. Now, before I end here today, I'd like to challenge you all. When you go home, take a piece of paper and list out all the negative issues that impact your own lives. Circle the most prominent one. You don't have to agree with me. Public health may not be your most important issue. It could be conflicts in the fields of technology, geopolitics, or foreign policy reform. All of these differences are normal, as it shows each one of us has our own unique views on the world. But collectively speaking, we must take initiative on whatever action that we choose. If we want to fix something, we can't just be a bystander. We have to take initiative. Start small. Your actions may seem minuscule at first, like they're not even making a difference. I felt the same way, and I still do. However, we can't hope that we can just wake up and hope all of our obstacles have been cleared. This clearly isn't possible. But if we believe that change can be made, change will be made.